Hello everyone, this is Anthony John Agnello, Senior Social Editor at Games Radar Plus. The Big Bad is in his tower cackling. Lightning crashes across the wasteland, lava seeps out of the ground, and beasts fill the night. All would be lost if our heroes hadn't just arrived, ready to kick some ass. But, uh, is that an arcade next door? Do they have battle toads? Many games do a great job at making you think the stakes are at their highest, then give you freedom to go wherever, shirking your quest to play mini games. These are nine extreme examples. Final Fantasy VII's Gold Saucer entices you to forget all troubles. You've been through hell to get here. Witnessed the girl of your dreams murdered by a fancy alien clone, waded through the live stream and come out on the other side. Just when things are looking up, a giant meteor hovers above the horizon, ready to tear the planet a new one. So who wants to go to a theme park? The world is ending by the time you reach the final disc in Final Fantasy VII, but you're still able to spend dozens of hours at the Gold Saucer, breeding chocobos to get that final summon, or you know, just snowboarding. Saints Row 4's data clusters and races will keep you from avenging humanity. So Earth's been destroyed. Total. The last remnants of humanity are chillaxing on Emperor Zinyak's private space cruiser. Or, you know, being held prisoner in a virtual version of the city you and your friends spent time in during Saints Row the Third. Virtual imprisonment and exploded planet aside, time is still of the essence. Zinyak's gotta pay. But there are all these useless but crazy fun races to run, and data clusters to find. Saints 4's reality truly is like a video game. Batman Arkham City's Riddler trophies and side quests will keep you from saving Gotham. Converting a major section of a large city into a murder carnival for convicts is easily one of the worst mayoral decisions ever. That said, it's kind of the perfect Batman playground. It's got everything he loves, including the looming threat of mass murder hanging over all of Gotham because of Dr. Hugo Strange's Sinister Protocol 10. The doc even chimes in over a PA system. Five hours left. Meanwhile, you're scouring every nook and cranny for balloons to pop or Riddler trophies to nab. Nice, Batman. Real nice. Chrono Trigger's time travel means you know exactly when the bad stuff will happen. In the ruins of the year 2300, you learn the world is ruined by the evil lavas. People huddle in corners, sheltering themselves from the cold. Food is incredibly scarce, and chilly machines ensure people stay alive but hungry for another day. To prevent this horrible future from coming to pass, you and your crew of heroes need to find this Lavos character and deal with him, stay! Thing is, Lavos ends the world in 1999 and you're from the year 1000, so you've got kind of a lot of time to kill before you hop in your time jumping ship and blast off into the apocalypse. It certainly gives you a lot of time to beat up on Gato's metal joints. If you win, he'll give you 15 silver points! Shenmue's capsule toys and arcade games will make you forget about the murder of your father. Lan Di came into your home, killed your dad, and stole your family's precious dragon mirror. Right in front of you. It's enough to make you run out and get a part-time job. I mean, y what? Well, to find Lan Di, you'll need to wander Japan, interrogate sailors for clues, and save up enough money for a ticket to China. But damn if there aren't a lot of distractions on the way. Sure, there's a time limit, but you have half a year of game time to investigate all Lan. Plenty of time to nab capsule toys by the truckload and waste hours playing Space Harrier. Revenge is overrated anyway. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Swords Imprisoned will wait for you. The Imprisoned, a skyscraper-sized demon and the origin of all evil, has busted out of his pen and is making a beeline for the settled temple in order to destroy it. That temple is just a short jaunt up a hill. Link is the only one who can stop him, and he needs to rush on over and stop him before it is too late. Over and over again. Or not. 
whether you're carrying way too many pumpkins at once, and really, what could one person possibly do with all these pumpkins? Or slicing bamboo stalks in half, there are plenty of side quests to keep you busy while the world is literally falling apart around you. Don't worry, the imprisoned will wait. He's an honorable beast. Mass Effect 3's Reapers are really slow at the whole genocide thing. Shortly, okay, immediately, after the opening of Mass Effect 3, the galaxy-ruining Reapers show up on Earth and start doing a little landscaping with their giant space squid lasers. Commander Shepard must leave Earth and find a weapon capable of taking them out. If he happens to come across a nightclub, well, that's just gravy. While Shep's dancing the night away, it might dawn on you, the Reapers never stop attacking Earth. While you're gallivanting across the galaxy, surveying moons, shooting the shit with Garrus, or trying to get Seth Green to make out with a robot, the Reapers are tearing the human population to shreds. No, please, go find that woman in the Citadel's heirloom necklace. I'm sure it's literally killing her to be without it. Skyrim's world is filled with, ooh, what's that over there? Dragons are back and they're pissed and a nasty one named Alduin, nicknamed World Eater, is super pissed. He forms the backbone of your quest, and it's up to you to stop him from causing the prophesized destruction of the world of man. That is, if you can pull yourself away from crafting your own weapons, or stealing anything that isn't nailed down, or cooking delicious meals, or wandering around the countryside and ducking into any hole you find, once you finish the many, 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 many things you can do in Skyrim, then maybe, maybe you can finally give that Alduin what for. Assassin's Creed 3's Revolutionary War won't start without you. According to Assassin's Creed 3, a single assassin named Connor was conveniently involved in almost every major event of the American Revolution. Boston Massacre, Paul Revere's Ride, and the Battles of Lexington and Concord. Even more convenient is how incompetent everyone is, as they are incapable of winning a battle without Connor's direct involvement. Which would explain why nothing happens while Connor is busy making sure his homestead has a decent innkeeper. The revolution simply won't progress until you say it does. Make Connor chase down Brent Franklin's inventions. Stalk wild beasts for a hunting club. Or, you know, play Fanarona. Or whatever. The revolution will wait. If you dig this and want more just like it, follow GamesRadar on youtube.com slash GamesRadar.